Hello everybody and welcome. My viewers probably don't know that I'm actually a musician, even though I work with IT, and I own a garage with some friends and we record ourselves there. So far, our equipment of choice has, has been the Sapphire Port Pro 24 and I have an iMac Core 2 Duo there running Logic 9. But even though we've been recording with it fine, it's very complicated when you have to handle drums and do you know, multi-layered recordings, you know, record first bass and drums and then record the rest of the band. It takes a lot of time, we make a lot of mistakes. And now guys are starting to have kids, so I start having problems to, you know, gather us together, have time, so we can, you know, finish our CD. With all that in mind, I decided to upgrade our setup, and I'm actually switching from the Sapphire Pro 24 to the to the Liquid Sapphire 56. They should be able to work together. I've heard it's possible to combine them logically so you get four more channels. And it's gonna look great. You're gonna be able to record our rehearsals in separate channels and also maybe even record our gigs. So, well, let's get to it. The unit is well packed, still including original plastics, which is great. Power card, British. The interface itself. Not too heavy actually. Ah, European power cord. User guide. Very cool, they send extra rubber feet with it in case you lose yours. Or in case you probably you know in case you don't wreck it you can attach them. There's some plastic thing, I don't know what it does. Ah, there's a cover for the power cable, probably. And some safety instructions. Silica gel. It looks mint. There are no scratches anywhere. Whoever owned this took excellent care of it. It's a 2U unit and looks amazing actually. This is super cool. There's actually a cover, so if you're use it, using it on your desk, you don't see the holes for the rack mount. So. I'm probably not gonna rack mount it, so this can stay here. I'm gonna keep looking neat. The Pro 24 includes the Firewire 400 to 800 cable, but the Liquid Sapphire does not. So I'm gonna borrow it from the Pro 24, and then I guess I can use a 400 to 400 cable to daisy chain the Liquid Sapphire and the Sapphire Pro 24. The European power cord has never been used. The Pro 24 is bus powered, but well, it would be crazy if the if this big one would be. I can see here it uses 30 watts. It works. It makes some hissing sound. Oh, it has this very cool liquid sapphire logo glowing there. For the test I'm gonna use a Behringer B2 Pro microphone. It is cheap, 
it does a job. I've had it for 15 years, so I know its quirks and particularities, and yeah, I could have a better microphone, but since I know this one so well, I stick to it. I'm not gonna test every single port, I don't have how, how anyway, and it doesn't make any sense, but I'm gonna randomly test a few of them. Starting with the first liquid, liquid port, then I'm gonna assume the second one works, and I'm gonna take for like five or six. Um, my MIDI cable is in our garage, so I cannot test it. I should be able to test the optical output as well, but I can see the lights glowing, so it should be working fine. Well, let's get to it. So we have the port set to microphone, phantom power is on, I should be able to get the gain up here and see something coming in. Pla 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 so I'm recording this for the second time because QuickTime is crap. I can see here that it's working fine. I have the microphone connected to the second analog port. It should have this liquid preamplifier. I can use it to emulate old-style analog um, amps. Not really interested in this feature, but maybe my friends who sing actually will be. And everything seems to be all right. I'm gonna try some other ports, I'm gonna test the microphone output and then I'm gonna try to get both cards working together. According to Focusrite's YouTube channel, all I have to do to get them working together in dual unit mode is to connect one to the other and turn it on. So let's try that. I get my Pro24 on top here, then I connect both together using a FireWire cable. Plop, plop. Here, and here, and I turn it on. And nothing happened. I remember reading the manual that the, well, any of the Sapphire will provide bus power out of the FireWire port. So, I can try two things here. The first thing is I can try connecting the card directly to the Mac, but I'm not sure if in the Mac Pro the Sapphire buses are all together or if each port has its own bus. I could check it out, but let's just follow the instructions from the manufacturer for a supported setup. And second way would be just to you know, connect power to it, and that's what I'm gonna do. It's on now, the firewire light is on, and I don't know what happened. Let's check the computer. I can see now an option, like a new drop down menu, and I can choose between the Liquid 55 and the Pro 24. So the, clearly the, the Liquid 56 is the master, because for example I cannot change the sample rate uh, on the Pro 24. So I have to go here and the maximum should be 48 kilohertz according to the instructions. It accepts and I hope that's not gonna screw up my screen capture but let's see the Pro 24 now and I can basically use all the functionality and I probably can send the mixes to, for example, Logic. I'm gonna have to see how it behaves, right? If I get, if it starts counting analog one as, you know, the last input, or if I can choose uh, the card inside Logic. But if I go to QuickTime and do a new audio recording, 
I still see only one sapphire here. So it's probably reporting to macOS as a single card. For example, we can go to audio MIDI setup. I don't need MIDI studio now. Yes, yeah, so now I have 44 inputs and 36 outputs. So Yeah, different streams here. Oh yeah, probably this represents a different card, but well, I'm gonna have to try it out. I think that's all for this video. Uh, thank you for watching and maybe tonight or during the week I will show you my studio. Let's see. See you next time.